Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. And I'm saying hello first this time, okay, because we don't rehearse this so well. Uh, who welcomes back? Uh, hey, everybody out there, how you doing? Good to see you again. Uh, my partner, John Coleman, and I just love speaking to you every Thursday on our, as John used to call it, a vlog. Uh, a vlog, right, right. right. Uh, but I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, defer uh, to you, John, today. What subject would you like to uh, share with our audience? Well, ordinarily, I would use the phrase something that's dear to my heart, but this subject is dear to my nose. <laughs> <laughs> a few weeks ago, um, I went in because I had a little, little what I thought was a zit on a, right on the bridge of my nose, and I, I went into the uh, skin doctor. Right, and you, and you, you went to skin doctor because you weren't going through puberty again. <laughs> right? You thought it might be something yeah. else. It, this was, but it turns out this was more than a zit. I am. Oh. I'm quite capable of popping zits any any time I like, but this was a zit, and then it would bleed a little bit, just mm. like a, a bloody zit. Then it would heal, and this did it three or four times uh, over a period of months. And I thought to myself, okay, I got to go see a skin doctor. This is not, you know, your usual uh, skin eruption. Mm. So he he did a little um, incision. And they took out, I guess, a biopsy, and they said, okay, they called me back, and they said, this is uh, basal, uh, a basal cell carcinoma, hmm. and, uh, and we're going to have to take it out. We've got to come in. So I'm going in uh, this week for a, what they call a Mohs, mm -hmm. uh, Mohs on the nose, which is where mm -hmm. they'll uh, dig out whatever cancerous cells and they've got in there, and then they... The Mohs apparently, you know, you've had this done a couple of times, but the right. Mohs is a, instead of a straight incision, they, they make a cut and then they heal it by overlapping the skin. That's what the Mohs is. Oh, I I, actually, I didn't know that. I've had about six or seven of them done over the years, but either on the top of my head or my back or my shoulder. And basically what they do is they, <clears throat> after the initial biopsy, and they say, well, this is either this it's not really deep, so we want to get a little bit more uh, to make sure right. that it's out. So they go, to me, the most procedure, uh, the most significant thing about it was that uh, when you go back for that, they take, uh, I call it slice and dice. They take a little slice and they give it to a technician who puts it under a microscope with chemicals and, and says, oh, you got it all, or no, you got to go back and get just a little bit more. And then they do one until they get a piece that's, so that kind of while you while you wait, they're checking the cancerous. Exactly, and then when they're done with it, uh, in my particular case, they cauterize it so that it scabs right away, and yeah. they put a bandaid on the back. And after two or three days, in every case for me, uh, uh, they say after don't shower for a day, but then after that you can shower. And then uh, uh, in my case, since I couldn't see it, put a little bit of ointment on it or something to keep it yeah. clean. And then when three or four days just go on, now I'm sure I had a scab and it wasn't you know, smacked down in the middle of my face, okay? Yeah. Which might only be an improvement in my case, but in your case, so, you, you are so, so, so Apollo-like, so angelic. So you've had, you've had this done three or four or more times more. in various parts of your body. Was it, was it basal cell carcinoma or yeah. was it melanoma? No, the, uh, those are all basal cell. Melanoma, whole different animal. That's deadly. These are okay. generally, if you get them early, it, it's pretty routine. They catch them, they, they get them. The, the melanoma, I actually had a melanoma, and I actually had to go in for surgery uh, on the top of my head. Uh, right. This is about two and a half, three years ago. And uh, they do all sorts of things, like they inject into the, the spot some dye, uh, a radioactive dye, to see if it spread to the uh, lymph nodes and things like that. So they, mm -hmm. because I, I see a skin doctor, because I used to be burnt to crisp uh, brown as a berry when I was growing up and I'm blue eyed and fair skinned. Sure. So uh, those, are, those are areas you have to watch for people with that kind of complexion. And so I've been going to a dermatologist now for about 15 years. And every, I would say every other visit once a year, they find a basal cell someplace and they they uh, clip it off. Every so often they find something, they clip it off and say, no, uh, that that was not, you know, we got it all. 
because they send yeah. it out to the lab. But this, they actually had to do in surgery, and because they had to take a large enough spot and dig deep enough that they were thinking of taking uh, some skin from my uh, jowl, okay, which would have been nice because I would have had a chin lift, uh, but they were able to find enough to, to uh, tape it over up there, whatever they did. And that was about two or three weeks before uh, I could get back to normal. But no more right. sunshine. I wear a hat. Since that time, right. I wear a hat all the I, time. I, I remember when you started wearing hats religiously. Right. Uh, was after that. And, and uh, that's a good thing for it. Right. Listen, anybody of a certain age, um, your your hair gets thinner. Right. right. <laughs> and the sun is powerful. Right. Um, even in the in the Midwest, in the upper Midwest, it's still you get a lot of sun. Yep. You know, those UV rays can can cause havoc with your skin. So wearing a hat is good for anybody of any age, I think. But particularly for us older folks. Yeah, but also I will let you know that uh, uh, people should go and have this stuff checked out because even with yeah. a melanoma, okay, which is not a fun thing to have, it is deadly if they don't catch it in time. I was lucky. They caught it in time. They got it all out. It had not spread to the lymph nodes. And I think about two and a half years, and they used to take MRIs every six months and do a lot of different things. And now they're, they're only going to see me once a year but I still see my regular dermatologist who still likes to, as I call it, slice and dice uh, every so yep. often. Uh, yep. But um, I've been cancer free now for about uh, two and a half years. So if you catch it early, and it, she said, even if it had gotten, I had a, a, a Dr. Yamamoto who uh, uh, was my uh, oncologist uh, surgeon. And she said that even for most people, they catch even a melanoma early, they don't have to do radiation a lot. They, they, they have drugs and stuff they can do that basically, if you catch it early enough, uh, right. won't change the outcome of your lifespan. Uh, whereas yeah. 10 years ago, if you had a melanoma, you were probably screwed. Yeah, so, and particularly by the time you caught it 10 years ago, people right. weren't aware of it. Right. And they didn't they didn't notice it as much. And so they they let it go. And yeah. unlike other cancers like prostate cancer and, and colon cancer, which is still not good to have, they're generally so slow growing that if you don't, they right. even say now if uh, they don't, ca if they only catch it when you're like 80, they don't bother with it anymore because the likelihood of you outliving the cancer growth is you'll die before the cancer gets a chance to get anything done to you. Mm, but I'm but, not sure I agree with that attitude, but okay. that's okay. Well, but but that sounds uh, like an insurance company talking. Well, uh, cutting these things off your back and your nose and so on and so forth. That prevents you from getting the cancer to spread. Yeah. So that, yeah. that's a, a, a sure sign. Yeah. So, so anyway, everybody, everybody, please uh, pay attention to your skin. Uh, pay attention to the possibility of skin cancer and go see a dermatologist. That can't hurt. If you go once a year, just go for the first time because don't go to Dr. Google. Because if you look at all the little blotches, well, this one gets bigger, this is red, this, you know what? Right. When you get into your uh, 50s and 60s, if you haven't gone, go to a dermatologist. And once a year, they can take a look at it. And if you don't have a problem, you're terrific. But if uh, you do have a problem, they catch it early. They can get rid of it without, for most people, without any long-term effects. So uh, yep. I'm... Uh, Good advice. Right. Good uh, advice. And, and wear a hat. Wear a hat. And next time you see me, I might have a little bandage on my nose. So I, oh, I was thinking about, I'm looking on Amazon to see if I can get you one of those Cannibal Lecter uh, face oh. masks to protect you. <laughs> not, not to well, that's what I'm wearing. Else. That's what I'm wearing now for the, oh. for the COVID. So, that's a, yeah. That, nice. <laughs> anyway, good luck. All right, we'll see, good luck. And, we'll see you uh, next week, everybody. Right, and and uh, so we'll, we'll send out a nose, nasal alert. Thanks a lot. Good luck. Bye. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.